with me, perhaps. So yeah, thanks. <laughs> Okay, maybe, maybe you're trying to answer the three questions. Uh, Ken, why don't you go first? Uh, hello. Hi. Um, I, I do take uh, the point, uh, uh, Professor Wung's point, about the, the, the trailer being oversexed, as it were. Uh, I don't yet know, um, on my next outing, uh, whether or not I will, faced with a similar sort of situation, uh, take a decision to cut a more measured trailer. I don't know. I might or might or I might not. I need to think about that. Um, but I will sort of answer the young lady's question by by saying at least that you do not cut a trailer so that people don't go to the cinema. <laughs> you don't cut a trailer that is boring. You don't cut a trailer that doesn't capture people's attention. And perhaps. By our standards, that trailer was incredibly uh, oversexed in some ways, uh, provocative. Um, but the, pr the trailer's producer that worked uh, with us on the film uh, therefore made a conscious attempt to create two trailers. One for the theatres, which was rated NC-16, and which contained no expletives, and another trailer that was a little bit more racy and which would hopefully appeal more to the online community, the, the wild, wild west of the cyberspace that uh, Arun talked about earlier on. Um, because it is, you're not required as such to, to, to you know, uh, get a classification from the MDA for an online trailer. So we tried to, I think, on the one hand, uh, respect the different forum for what they were. Okay, it's going to be screened in a public theatre. There may be some aunties and uncles watching a NC-16 or an M18 film. You, you don't want to give them a heart attack. Let's cut a, <laughs> uh, an interesting but not uh, expletive-ridden uh, trailer. And then for the online trailer, we can be a little bit more liberal so it was not, let's go for the, the racism, let's really pu pu push that button. It was more like, well, for the theatre, no F-words. For the online trailer, a little bit more free-for-all. It was really that simple. Just in, in a nutshell, um, do you think we need to nurture our public in is, other ways, other than just, it's not just a, an think, issue of censorship? I think right? her second question is, how do we um, help Singaporeans to become more mature, so they can differentiate between a satire and a non-satire. And uh, maybe, maybe Walter yeah. could, could answer that. Um, <clears throat> this point was actually raised during the deliberations of Films Appeal Committee, that some people actually said the Singaporean public's not ready and cannot tell satire from others. I think that's pretty insulting. Mm. It's like saying we are smart enough to tell the difference, but <laughs> ordinary folks are too dumb to know. Um, and that again, is one of the problems, I think, with Singapore. That you do have a certain uh, stratum, that things that we're okay, we've got good judgment, but everyone else is too dumb to know. They've got the IQ of broccoli, and we've got to <laughs> lead them. Um, I don't think we can make that assumption. That's, that's why I said one has, to be able, one has to be prepared to stand up and take responsibility and say, look, I don't think Singaporeans are stupider than I am, I don't find it offensive. I have faith in my fellow citizens that they won't find it offensive. And if we are wrong, well, okay, we're wrong. But if you don't take that stand, we'll never find out, will we? Yeah. I, I guess the, the point that Walter's making, which I share, is that it, it's important for the elite not to be patronizing. Because the elites often patronizing think that we are enlightened enough that we understand what the message is, but um, the Singaporean rakyak might not. They are not clever enough, not sophisticated enough. So let's protect them, you know. So in, in doing so, we are underestimating our own people. The answer to your, your question, you want to be a member of which one? The panel or the committee? <laughs> 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 the, the appointments are made by the minister in charge. So at the moment, the minister in charge is Lawrence Wong. He doesn't make the choices himself. He would ask his uh, staff, and the staff will in turn ask um, many people 
I mean, if I were chairman of the Arts Council, he would ask me, Do you know, can you nominate some people? And, uh, and we will ask the experts to, to suggest names. So if you're interested, I'll put forward your name. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's, go, let's go to the next two questioners. Um, good yep. evening, everybody. My name is Xian. I'm from Faculty of Engineering. And okay, we had a few topics that were discussed today, and one of it was that, uh, as Mr. Arun expressed, the, that many governments see it as their role to protect the public interest, to serve as a moderator. But at the same time, we also talked about that sometimes when it is um, coming out of an coming out of artistic expression, rather than a form of bigotry, that um, that perhaps we shouldn't clamp down too tightly. That. Um, that artists need to be allowed to express their freedom. So perhaps my question, it's maybe it's a two-sided question, that um, on the one hand, we, we say that we want artistic freedom, but in this case, the, the film was banned by the consultative, uh, consultative panel and not by the government per se, by the representatives of the community. So in this case, in a sense, it was the community speaking out um, that we don't want this. And it was originally the government who um, said go ahead with an M18 rating. So how do you, how do you reconcile that? That, um, that you say as an artist, I think we are ready for this, but the people speak out and say that we don't want it. And on the flip side, as a government, how do you then say that, you know, um, this is too much, we want to stop it, we don't want to talk about it. Then when is the correct time to talk about it, when do we um, be free to express our opinion and discuss race, discuss religion in our multicultural society. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Actually, the decision to ban the film and the decision to unban it were mo both made by representatives of the people because the film's consultative uh, panel consists of 24 citizens and the film's appeal committee of which Walter is a member. How many members are there in the there was, there was seven yeah. of us present. But the, uh, the committee, 12, right? 12. 12. The full committee never yeah. okay. <laughs> So, so both, both the panel and the committee are uh, supposed to represent the people, you know. But so, um, well, I, I think the government, in 1992, when I chaired the, the firm, the, the censorship review committee, um, one of my main recommendations was to take away the power from the bureaucracy and give it to the people. And actually the bureaucracy are very grateful for my recommendation because they feel that it's very, very difficult for them you know, to make a decision and they were afraid whatever decision they make, they will get beaten up. So they were very happy when we had the um, consultative panel to advise them and we were in the firm appeal committee to have the final word. Hi, um, good evening. My name is Ingmar Salim. Um, this question goes out to mainly Ms. Hannah, but also the other panelists as well. So basically, um, the history, uh, in terms of the history of this movie, so what happens is that it was initially sent out to the uh, MDA and was classified M18 initially, but it was banned following um, complaints received from the public. So um, in light of the context of the time, um, the issue of like the Amy Chong incident and the innocent, innocence of Muslims and all that. So um, the question is, um, did these, um, content, did, did these um, issues affect the decision um, to the extent that the movie was actually banned? Yeah, that, that's, that, that's my question. I think, Hannah, maybe yeah. you can. Yeah. Thank you for that um, question. Sorry, I think uh, I also brought it up during my presentation. Um, although I cannot like, prove it, that it did actually affect, it did come up during our discussions and without divul divulging too much information of the details, I think the general atmosphere was that we were treading very cautiously at that point um, and we were wondering whether that to allow it at that point of time was, uh, was to be very detrimental to the community. Um, even if I may just share that, you know, there were talks about like, you know, suggesting that it could be delayed or you know the 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 release could have been delayed. I mean, there was always an open discussion. We were we were never like totally. I think there was never a sense that, um, and this is to address some of the other concerns. You know, how representative we are. How do we manage this um, um, relationship with the government? And I, as a newbie to actually through the FCP, I was actually pleasantly surprised with the sort of very objective and um, very nuanced views that we discuss over, over many, many